Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, France had a son named Wallonia, and the Netherlands had a son named Flanders. One day, a bunch of crazy stuff happened in Europe, yada, yada, yada. After all the crazy stuff subsided, Flanders was like, hey, Wallonia. Yeah? Uh, I'm gonna move out of my parents' place, and I got this new rad apartment, but I kind of need another guy to help me pay for the rent. I don't know, you're kind of a cool guy, I guess. Uh, would you like to be my roommate? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Why not? Um, but just for the record, I don't speak any Dutch. Oh, no worries. I don't speak any French. And that's how Belgium became a country, kind of. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. You've all probably at least heard of the name Belgium, and if you have, congrats! That's not enough. Let's dissect the flag. First of all, the flag of Belgium looks like the flag of Germany knocked over to the left side, but just keep in mind that the color sequence is black, yellow, red, not black, red, yellow. Also, the flag has an unusual proportion of 13 to 15, making it almost a square. The flag's colors are directly correlated to the country's coat of arms, the black representing the shield and determination, the yellow representing the lion and generosity, and the red representing the lion's claws and tongue and the crown, as well as bravery and strength. Speaking of strength, you're gonna need a lot of it to understand this next part. If you're gonna learn anything about Belgium, the one thing you have to understand is how the country is split up. This is very important, so pay attention, Brandon! <laughs> what? What? Azerbaijan? Yeah? Dude, that was like eight episodes ago! First of all, Belgium is located in Europe, right under the Netherlands, and northeast of France, right at the foot of the North Sea, next to the English Channel. In the most fundamental way I can put this, Belgium is divided into three regions. The Dutch, or the Flemish-speaking North region, called Flanders, the South, or French Walloon region, called Wallonia, and the capital, Brussels, acts in itself as a third region, and functions in a completely bilingual way. Most of the people in Brussels speak both Dutch and French, however French is a little bit more prevalent. Got it? Okay, good, because we're not done. Each of the Flanders and Wallonia regions are then divided into five provinces each, making a total of ten provinces. Brussels doesn't count and is considered its own region not belonging to either Flanders or Wallonia, even though technically it's completely engulfed in Flanders. But then again, the region around Brussels has a French administrative area around the city called the BHV, or the Roussel al vivoud County, in which large numbers of French minorities live and can be judged in French, even though it's in Flanders. Still with me? Good, because it gets even crazier. The French also have administrative centers in the southeast and the southwest regions of Flanders, Flanders, and a Wallonian municipal exclave in the West Flanders province called Komine Wachneton, even though most of the people there speak Dutch. Furthermore, the Flemish have one municipal exclave in the Liège province in Wallonia called Vouren. Oh, we're just getting started though. Then you have the German-speaking minority in the east of Wallonia in the Liège province, whom are making propositions to create an 11th province called Upton saint -Vie. Speaking of Germans, Belgium has a lot, and I repeat, a lot of weird territorial claims and boundaries. For one, there are technically five German exclaves hidden right along the border of the Liège province province in East Belgium. However, these exclaves are only separated from mainland Germany from a Belgian train track, the Venban, which is no longer in use. This means that you can be in Germany and only have 10 meters between you and Belgium between you go back into Germany. The smallest of these German exclaves is just a small house near the German town of Kosen with a front yard less than two hectares in area. Oh, but wait, there's more. Then you reach the ever so confusing town of Barrel Nassa and Barrel Hertog, in which there are 22 Belgian enclaves in the Netherlands and eight Dutch enclaves in Belgium, seven of which are counter enclaves or a part of the Netherlands in Belgium in the Netherlands. These borders at first make no sense. Apparently they cross awkwardly through streets, buildings, restaurants, stores, and even houses. A person can literally wake up in one country and shower in the other. The rule is, whatever side your front door is on is the country that you pay your taxes to. The reason why it's so confusing is because, long story short, there was a guy ruling the area called Henry I, Duke of Brabant, who gave parcels of land to Godfrey II of Scholten, who ruled the area to the east, in an attempt to build an alliance so that his enemy Dirk VII wouldn't expand his influence. Long story short, Henry's land became Belgium, and Godfrey's land became the Netherlands. To this day, the two countries have stayed true to Godfrey and Henry's agreements, and have split the land exactly how they did. But wait, we're not done just yet. Finally, you have the confusing Lys Rivière Canalari River in the border between the Walloon province of Enut and France. Starting in the town of Halou en France, this river zigzags for about 26 kilometers with multiple river islets and land pieces that act as penne enclaves until it all stops in the town of Armentières. Each side has an equal seven enclaves each along the river. Okay, now let's talk about the landscape. 
It's mostly flat. Outside the cities, there's farms and forests. It's pretty lush and green. However, the Worldwide Fund for Nature ranked Belgium pretty low in terms of their environmental performance. And the water quality was the lowest in the EU, mostly due to the high population density. Belgium isn't really agriculturally driven. I mean, economically, most of their revenue comes from machinery, pharmaceuticals, diamonds, many of which were imported from the Congo. We'll explain about that in a little bit. And service and industry jobs as well. Okay, that's about it. Moving on. Now this is where things get really strange. In the shortest way I can put this, Belgium is kind of like an artificial country with technically no distinct former identity in which two regions kind of became roommates and the respective communities have a government with the same power as a central government. Huh, and you thought Andorra was confusing with that whole co-principality thing. Brother, please, I'm Belgium. Sit down, I'm gonna give you a lesson in complication monatics. First of all, Belgium has a little less than 11 million people at about 57%. The slight majority of people are Flemish from Flanders, about 42% are Walloon from Wallonia and 1% German from the German community. Keep in mind, although it's debatable, the terms Flemish and Walloon are more in reference to linguistic communities and not ethnicities. By definition, you could have a Congolese guy in Liège identifying as a Walloon and a Moroccan guy in Antwerp identifying as a Fleming. As long as they speak the languages and become citizens, that's pretty much it. In terms of race though, about 77% of the people identify as ethnically Belgian and the remaining 23% identify as non-Belgian in origin. Some of the largest groups being Moroccans, Italians, Turks, and even Congolese from the Democratic Republic of Congo, as it was a former Belgian colony, along with Rwanda and Burundi, which is where a lot of the diamonds we talked about earlier come from. The Belgians even took over a small part of China for a couple decades in the 20th century in Tianjin, after quickly giving it back, and to this day, pictures from the Belgian Chinese colony are some of the rarest photos you can find in historical archives. As we mentioned, Belgium has three distinct regions, Flanders, Walloon, and Brussels. However, regions weren't enough, and so Belgium decided to split things up even more into communities. Due to the German-speaking minority, predominantly in the southeast, Belgium created a semi-mediary third community, even though only 1% of the country actually speaks German, less than the amount of people in Belgium who actually speak Arabic, and has instituted three separate governments and parliaments, one for each language group, the Dutch, French, and German. Each of these governments actually has just as much power as the central government. Wait, what? On top of that, the French and Dutch communities are allowed to provide cultural and social services to the citizens in Brussels, but not in the other region. This means that a family living in Brussels could possibly depend upon the central government for taxes, the French government for community centers, the Dutch government for schools, and the Brussels government for the police force. Four governments acting at once. And then you have a king. Long story short, Belgium became a constitutional monarchy that started in 1830 with Philippe I as the current head of state. They are the only monarchy in Europe with no actual crown or lavish robes and scepters. They gained independence from the Netherlands, French-speaking Wallonia joined along and then they chose a German prince to become their first king. In terms of culture, Belgium can be attributed to a lot of things. For once, some of the world's most renowned surrealist artists came from Belgium, like René Magritte, cartoons like the Smurfs, and my homeboy, Tintin. I have read almost every single one of those comics. Ain't nobody mess with Tintin. That dude is mad boss. The national dish is mussels with French fries and mayonnaise. Belgians will tell you that fries originated from Belgium. And of course, waffles. They make some of the best chocolate in the world that rivals Switzerland. And of course, every Everyone's favorite Belgian, Jean-Claude Van Damme. They host the headquarters of the EU and are typically called upon to help Europe administer their diplomatic affairs. Affairs with other countries we'll discuss in... Oh, Belgium, 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 when will you learn? First of all, Belgium is a very neutral country after gaining independence from the Netherlands. Belgium quickly rose to become one of the leading powers of the industrialized Europe world, and it was a founding member of both the EU and NATO. This means that since day one, Belgium has had a huge entourage of affiliates that they've kind of kept close. However, some are still closer than others. The UK has always been a good buddy of Belgium since they played a pivotal role in the independence of Belgium. The US is also a good friend, and to this day, they still commit commemorate the Battle of the Bulge, in which the US played a huge role in during the liberation of Belgium in World War II. The only country that might have a little bit of a distaste towards Belgium might be the Democratic Republic of Congo, as they were occupied and became a colony for a little less than a century. Belgium kind of did a lot of things to the Congo. Although tensions are generally eased off a bit today and numerous Congolese people immigrate to Belgium yearly, there's still a somewhat aversion that lingers on in the back of each Congolese mind when history is brought up. Of course, as you would guess, France is a close friend too 
two whom not only played a role in Belgium's independence, but also culturally resonates with the South Walloon region as well. The Netherlands is a close friend as they jive well with the Flanders region, despite the fact that they have a somewhat friendly rivalry with each other. Over the years, many referendums have actually passed in Belgium in which they almost considered re-annexing themselves back to their respective neighboring countries, the Netherlands and France. However, they just can't seem to do it, even though the sense of nationalism is kind of weak, except during soccer games in which they go all out Belgian pride, they still can't seem to let go of each other for some weird reason. In terms of their best friend though, they would probably consider Luxembourg. Luxembourg is kind of seen as like the little brother of Belgium, and has been there with Belgium since the very beginning. They were even for a short while part of Belgium after independence, and their own monarchs, Philip I and Grand Duke Henry, are actually cousins too. In conclusion, Belgium is disputedly the most confusing politically engineered country in all of Europe, and by all means, it makes no sense how they've kept it together for almost 200 years, but they actually did somehow. Belgium, we dip our fries and mayonnaise to you. Stay tuned, Belize is coming up next.